ESPN 94.1 FM at 8 and 9 30 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Never FDIC. It is Friday, March 27th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can join the program by calling the Miller Lite phone lines, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Miller Lite, whole true, great taste, only 96 calories, the original light beer. Excuse me just for a second, I'm a... Uh, I'm going back and forth right now. Uh, I'm having an off-air conversation with David Kahn, and uh, we're trying to set up Swan and Kahn, the podcast, and we're trying to set up a, a paywall for it as well. And I'm going to try to get him on the show next week because it's got to be rough. Right now, you're a play-by-play guy. It's got to be rough. You don't have any play-by-play. And MILB is offering up fans who like minor league baseball an opportunity. They're offering a free preview of MILB TV. So you can watch everything up to opening day, whenever opening day is, whenever that will be. So if you want to go back, catch some power games, you know, I have found, you might not have this app, but I have found that I am watching Pluto TV a lot more. Just as background noise. Now, of course, I'm a radio guy, so I keep the radio on. I've got it as background sometimes. I'm listening a little bit more um, intently. And I've got Pluto TV up, and I'm just watching things on that because I don't know. I know a lot of people are watching Netflix right now trying to find things that they haven't watched. They're binging at home. Of course, I hope you're stopping whatever you're doing for this show at least, at least live or back on the podcast after we post it. Other than that, you're free to binge anything you want. You're free to go and do that. Just carve out at least an hour for me, if you wouldn't mind. I'd appreciate that. But I've found Pluto TV. Free app. You just download it to your smart device, your smart TV, your Fire Stick, your Roku. I guess it's on Apple TV, too. I don't have the Apple TV. A little overpriced for what I need. And you can watch sports. You can watch comedies. Bad movies, semi-good movies, long-forgotten television shows, cartoons. It's all there. It's like this. And it's like TV. Old day TV. Before we got VCRs, before we got DVRs, it's like that. You turn TV on and you're watching. No rewind. There's no pause. It's on. You're stuck. You better pay attention. You better keep an eye on it. You better follow along because if you miss something, you missed it. And if you want to go back, you can't. It's sort of relaxing, actually, just to have it on. Just It's on its background. It's really cool. So I've found that Pluto TV has been one of my vices. A lot of people are doing Netflix and, of course, podcasting. A lot of people are listening to podcasts. And here's a tip for you. If you want to listen to the podcast and say you have an Amazon Echo that's the best way to do it. If you don't have your phone downloading the show every night and you're not listening to it that way, you want to use your Amazon Echo, there's a couple of ways to do that. First of all, since we're on Apple Podcast, I've enabled Apple Podcast on my Echo. And so when I say, Alexa, play the drive with Paul Swan, it usually is smart enough to go get it from Apple Podcast. Or you could do what I do. I've enabled Stitcher, and I'll say... Alexa, ask Stitcher Radio to play the latest episode of The Drive with Paul Swan, and Alexa will do that for me. Tune in's an option for you as well, but I use Stitcher as an app. Works really well. Apple Podcast is there now, so if you want to ever go back, catch a previous episode, you want to go listen, you can't listen to the show live and you want to find an easier way to do it, that's a way to do it that has been really helpful because, after all, We've got a little extra time on our hands. A lot of people are still quarantined right now. A lot of people are obeying the do not leave, do not be about. A lot of people are working from home right now. I'll say this. I am fortunate in one regard that since radio broadcasting considered a essential service that I get to actually be in the office and work. And that's a lot better use of my time than 
being quarantined at home trying to work. So I'm fortunate. And one of the positives for me is I get to do this show still on a daily basis because if we ever get to the point where I can't do it from the studio. I'm either going to try to do it from my house or I'm going to be able to podcast it for you. I'm going to do a podcast. Just go directly to podcast. And that's my promise to you. Whatever happens, we're going to do something. For those of you who tune in on a daily basis, download the show or listen to it live, I'll have something for you on a daily basis. So what do I have today on the show? Well, Marshall Volleyball Coach Ari Agnes is coming on. She's always fun. She might be one of the most fun coaches over at Marshall. Plus, it's going to be really interesting to talk to her because the fact that here's a coach. They had a camp coming up. Was, I believe it had a match and a camp coming up. I don't have the schedule right in front of me, but it, it was soon. And this was an opportunity to get to work with youngsters at the same time. Match. Work with your team. You can't do that now. And you're trying to keep your team together. You're trying to keep your team healthy at the same time you're trying to keep your team ready to go trying to figure out what your volleyball team's going to look like what your team's going to look like in today's new reality so Ari's going to be fascinating to talk to plus unfortunately she's not very good in the kitchen from what she posted on social media I'm going to investigate that that's going to be our deep discussion today what she's doing in the kitchen actually if I understood the picture correctly she had a teleconference going on, or at least a, I don't know if she was using Skype, what, whatever it was. It was one of the group conferences. It looked like the Brady Bunch times 15 on the screen here. A Zoom conference. And they're all trying to bake. I want to get to the bottom of that. So we're going to try to keep you updated on what's happening in sports today. At the same time, have a little fun with you. We'll do that when we continue with today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Now, back to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We are presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Welcome back to today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. So now... We've all been sheltered in place for the most part over these last couple of weeks, and it's had an impact on a lot of people, especially if you are in the profession of coaching because sports is pretty much shut down. And that means not only has it shut down, you can't have contact with your team since you're quarantining, you're trying to figure out how to keep them healthy, how to keep them in shape, how to keep them focused, and at the same time, try to cook food. And that's where Ari Agnes, the head coach of the Marshall Volleyball team, and inspired by her um, her desire to do well for her, her team, has taken up cooking. And I was looking at the results online, and I don't know if I was um, – I don't – I'm in shock. I don't know – I don't know how to take this. I was just in shock, <laughs> and we'll go from there. You know, um, <laughs> I would be in shock, too. The good news is I don't think all of us are going to take up baking as a profession. And we actually had Taylor lead it. I am not a chef. I am not a baker. But it was really cool. It was we we all conferenced in um, just to check on the girls and gave them the ingredients early. If they wanted to do it, great. If not, they could all kind of just sit there and, and judge, if you will. Um, so it was a lot of fun. It's just it's it's a time it's a time unlike any other and we're just trying to find ways to get creative to still see the team so we thought that what we're going to do is come up with you know we did a virtual scavenger hunt the other day where um all of them were on their computers or phone and so we could see their faces and then we would give them something to go find and whoever made it back to the screen first got a point for that round so we're trying to just do silly fun things to keep them engaged so that we can still see them so that it's not just volleyball. It's not all this, the really depressing stuff that's going on in the world right now. It's just a smile for 45 minutes to an hour, a couple times a week. How important is that face-to-face communication, not just a text, Hey, how are you doing? But to actually have that face-to-face conversation and not just maybe one-on-one if need be, I'm sure, but with the group as well. You know, when we did it, 
it's huge. And I think even we get caught up in just being able to get a quick text through and get the message on and, and keep moving. But the first time that we did it, it was amazing to see their reactions because you could tell that they hadn't, they'd probably talked to each other one-on-one, -on -one, but they hadn't talked to the group and they all just kept talking about how much they missed each other and they were goofing around and telling jokes and making fun of each other. And it was just so lighthearted. And even for, for those that, you know, there's, there's different personalities on every team and there's some that don't talk as much, but it doesn't mean that they're not getting something from seeing other people. I think for any type of mental health, this is something that's really important because just you could be so alone right now. And it's just a friendly reminder that we're all here and we're all in it together and it's, we're, we're going to get through it. It's just going to, it's going to be tough. Now with the situation at hand, everything's on lockdown, shut down, seasons are ending or on hold. What are you allowed to do or not do with the team? Because you're separated, obviously. You can't yep. go and hang out with them or work them out. You can't do any of that. But what can you do to try to keep them together also focused on volleyball when you're not doing all the other stuff? So we can talk to them as much as we want. And, and so the, how we use this video time is that we just check in. We don't talk volleyball. We don't talk weightlifting. Um, all that we really focus on is just seeing each other's smiling faces and just talking about how their day was and how their week was and what they're planning on doing for the week. So with us, there's no, per the NCAA, there's no countable activity that you can do. So you can't do anything that requires them to be there um, just because they want the safety of the athletes, which I completely understand. I think, you know, we were early on as it was all kind of fizzling out. I was very much on the cautionary side of things and just wanted them to be home with their families because I can imagine how scary that would be. So we had started kind of prepping through how we were going to do this as a staff. Um, but their safety and their, you know, they, they would be just as safe here. And, and I understand that, but I do think that there's something to be with mom or dad or grandma and grandpa or helping grandma and grandpa. And I got a lot of kids that are able to go back and, and help their families. So we try to talk as much as possible. We have a group chat that we all text in. Um, but we also are all that we're allowed to do is just communicate with them right now. And honestly, that's all that that's all we need. Joining us on the program, the head coach of the Marshall volleyball team, Ari Agnes. And I was hoping maybe this week we were going to be talking about you had another match scheduled. You had another camp scheduled. And I know <laughs> all of that's been put on hold. So I'm kind of curious, what's the path look like best case forward? Because I'm sure you still want to when it's permissible and when it's appropriate, do these things. You haven't stopped being a volleyball coach. You're just at home right now <laughs> trying to cook. And obviously knowing that um, you hired a good assistant coach in that department. <laughs> so we, you know, best case scenario, we can get through the summer, have our summer clinics. Um, but it, I think the one thing we're trying to hold on to is to just, stay home, do all that we can so that we have a fall season. Um, I think everybody is still kind of scared right now and, and not sure when things are going to turn over. So all that we're hoping to do is to have a season this fall and, and have it, everybody healthy, everybody's ready to go. And if we're allowed, if, if camp permits, then great. But um, definitely the safety of the community is the first thing on our plate. So we've kind of put camps and, and any other thing to that nature to the back end. But I do think that if everything lifts, whatever sport you want to be into, um, I do think it'll be such a great time for kids to finally go back and be able to be social with um, other other kids their age or different ages. So I think that hopefully for the sake of, of the community, I hope that everything gets lifted so that we can have summer camps or clinics or, or and not just sports, just so that these kids that have been inside um, for so long are isolated with just their families that they get their interaction again with their peers. Are you at a point yet where you're starting to look at what does the season look like if it's pushed back a month? What's the season look like if it's pushed back a couple of months? Are you at that point yet yourself or is the athletic department, if, if there's anything you can share at that point yet where they're starting to game that a little bit? You know, I talked to a colleague yesterday, actually, he's at a, a different school and he had mentioned that their conference was talking about you know, what the NCAA could or couldn't do. So we've, we've definitely sat through and thought through some things, but um, 
I don't think it's a top priority. I, I, we have to be ready for whatever happens. And we started talking about the fall travel. We have some of our fall travel going. Um, so it's just a big pause. So I think it's more as a staff, we're just ready as soon as we get the green light to do whatever that is we'll be ready to go. Um, but yeah, I think especially with the time that we've got right now, you start to think about what could happen. If this happens, let's have this as an answer, just so that whenever something gets put in place, we're at least ready. And we've at least tried to think through some things, but there's been, I mean, everybody's got an opinion and, and I think people think it could get pushed back and maybe you only have conference, but those are just speculations. And I don't think that there's much truth to them because I think it's just a matter of, when it all gets lifted. And I think that our focus should be honestly just one day at a time. And, and that's hard to say as a coach, knowing that our season's coming up, but there's also coaches dealing with all of their players, such as baseball and softball that just went through this and all of the spring sports and basketball getting cut, shut, getting cut early. So I think we're on the, the brighter side of things. So we just kind of want to sit back and see what happens. I'm sure it's got to be tough on you because not only have you have to deal with this from a professional standpoint, your job, your day to day, but you take care of these young ladies, these student athletes, and you take that on anyway. As a coach, they look to you. You have promised their parents that you entrust your 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 daughter with me. I'm going to take care of them, and you've got to work that every day. So I'm sure it's uh, it's even more taxing for you to try to keep doing that and be so far away at the same time, even though the technology is allowing it. It is. And, you know, I think that when we found out everything was kind of happening, but there were still no cases in West Virginia and how do we go forward? Um, we, as soon as we got the green light, let our girls go home. And, and I received a lot of texts and phone calls from either the, the team or parents just so appreciative of letting them go back. And, and it is, it's, it's tough. It's, they're still doing their academics. They're still having the same, you know, good, bad days that they were here. So you go from having a day-to-day -day interaction with all of these, these young ladies to nothing. So it's been, it's been taxing, but it's been fun being able to be creative. And what we still have to do as a staff is just let them know that we care about them. We're here for them and, and everybody's going through this, but to also listen that if you're having a bad day, it's okay. And then when you're having a great day, we want to hear about that too. So it's just been fun being able to celebrate the little things from far away, whether that's an A on a quiz or they made something for dinner for the whole family, whatever that looks like. We're just trying to stay engaged as possible so that they can feel like they're having some sort of accomplishment, no matter what that looks like. Marshall Volleyball Coach Ari Agnes joining us on the program now. What inspired me to do this phone call today was was twofold. One, I thought this would be a good conversation. Of course, the other part was the fact that you, you had the the bravery to post what you did online with the baking. <laughs> and um, how hard is it though for you to try to maintain that energy, stay creative like that? I'm trying to do this show on a daily basis, and I don't know what I'm doing as far as should I be all sports? Should I try to have some fun? Should I find that balance? It's difficult for me, and but you're – I'm just doing a one-hour radio show. You're taking care of a team. <laughs> you know, um, I, I enjoy it, but I also really enjoy – I obviously have a lot of energy most of the time, so that comes pretty naturally. Um, and we have put volleyball and sports and them thinking that they have to only think about that on, on the back burner because I just think that what's going on in the world is so – crazy that we just need some really happy things. We need smiles. We need uh, anything that we can think of. So we've let them, um, for, Taylor just happens to be, and obviously she owns an ice cream shop, right? So sweets have to be right up her alley. Um, but she, we're trying to think of things that could be life lessons. We were already doing that this spring where every Friday we had a life lesson. We've had, we had the Marshall police come in to talk to the girls about safety. We um, had uh, Dr. Bender, the nutritionist, come in to talk to them about stuff. So we were already kind of starting that path of what can I learn? And so now it's just a matter of maybe how to fry an egg next time. We, how to, <laughs> it just, it, I don't know. It's, I think that it's super exciting to hopefully we can still impact them. So I think that that's probably what keeps me going. And then on top of that, I just want them to be able to have 45 minutes 
of a good day. They're all very blessed with amazing families, and and but it's very easy to just get up in this time, roll over, do your homework online, maybe work out, and then just like nap. And I think that that can get really boring after about a week. So our job is to just make sure that they're still stimulated and things are still going on and they're challenged, whether that's going to find something in their house or whether that's reading a book or listening to us read a book to them. And we're just trying to get as creative as possible. So if you come up with any ideas, we are we are all ears. You want to read books on the air for me? Maybe you, you can... <laughs> I don't, I don't think I've got the voice for it. I okay. think that that's right up your alley. I don't know. Uh, I'm thinking that might be something. That's a YouTube series if I haven't seen one yet, the, uh, <laughs> the Ari Agnes Book Club. I mean, that could be a thing. You could, you could read to your team and youngsters in the community, or you could have your team read to youngsters in the community. I, that would be there awesome. There we go. This would be good. So when you're not being Ari Agnes and you're not being energetic and creative, um, how are you keeping yourself from getting into that rut? You're binge watching something on Netflix or, or <laughs> are you spending so much energy trying to take care of everyone else? You don't have time for yourself. No, no, I think you have to make time for yourself. I think that that's part of it. Um, I work out and just at home, obviously. And honestly, I walk my dog more than anything in the world because I'll do something, you know, make breakfast, get up, work out, work for two to three, four hours, then take a break, let the dog walk them around the neighborhood, come back and, and work a little bit more. But I try to make it as routine as possible so that when I do have a weekend, when, you know, we're on Friday now and, and when that happens, you can kind of just bed around and it feels a little bit more normal. Um, so I definitely get up and try to treat it just as if I was going into the office. Jake and I have set up an office at our dining room table and, and have tried to keep things pretty normal. But I would say that my dogs, I can't tell if they're happy or upset that we've like screwed up their routine, but they, they definitely hang out with us. And then we go and we walk them. So they're going to come out of this really fit. <laughs> if nobody else does, my dogs will. So no binging on Netflix. That's what, that's your advice. No binging. You know, I've, I have picked up reading and, and I've always read, you know, learning books and coaching books and all that stuff. But right before this, as we were traveling for recruiting, I had gotten a book and then I just kept like powering through them. So I've got a long list of books that, that I just want to get through. When I binge, I binge really hard. And so if I start something, it'll be over in that day. So I've got to like spread out the binging. I have watched little fires everywhere on Hulu, but I also read the book before. So that was amazing. Um, the tiger show thing on Netflix. I just watched the first episode today and I think that one's going to be fun. Okay. So I should watch that. I, you know, I was so against it. I don't know why, but everybody was talking about how it's just kind of one of those that like leaves your jaw open. And I'm, it is, it is definitely that. So I'm one episode in, I have not fully committed, but I think at some point I will fully commit this weekend to watching it. Okay. I'm going to watch Tiger King. I believe it's called. I'm going to watch that. Now. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so is this going to become maybe the start of a new hobby for you and Jake? Are you going to start your own podcast discussing the things you, you binge now? Is that with the free time? Is that going to happen? You know, if it does, I think, I think it would really take off. So I think that we should. <laughs> we just don't have very much content, you know, we're, we're boring people. I don't believe that for an instant. I've seen Jake's wardrobe. I don't believe that for an instant. <laughs> that's, that's fair. That's very, very fair. What are you doing to pass the time? I'm I'm here. I'm here at the radio station. I'm hoping that um, you know we can stay open and do what we do. And it's hard sure. to, it's hard to do the show because there's really not much sports happening. So I'm trying to avoid falling into the pitfalls of doing silly things. But at the same time, maybe that's what I need to do. I don't know. So maybe you need to be my life coach for at least a week. Get me back on track. I mean, yesterday, I'll give you an example. Yesterday, I hadn't talked to Kelly Schmidt in forever, and that was the most fun I've had in a long time um, because for some reason we just became friends when she was uh, at Marshall, and we don't like any of the same sports teams at all. And I think that's the basis of it all. <laughs> She's That's amazing. A, she's a Pittsburgh girl, and I have to hear it every day, every day. Dang it! Yeah, so uh, you you might okay. Ha- okay. You might have to help me out here. Maybe maybe I'm gonna get little messages from you now, little things like, okay, Paul, here's what I want you to do today. Here's what I want you to work on. I mean, I'm gonna accept that. I mean, if you want to guide okay. me, okay, okay. 
I will keep that in mind when I come up with all of the great ideas if I don't steal them for myself. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Joining, <laughs> joining us on the program, I appreciate you. Thank you for doing it today. Ari Agnes, the head coach of the Marshall Volleyball team. Hopefully here in the future we can talk about volleyball again, or at least we can talk about how you've improved as a, a chef or at least um, making pancakes. Love it. Thank you, sir. Ari Agnes. Appreciate her coming on the program today. We will continue on with today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We are presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Welcome back to the Friday edition of Drive, March 27th edition here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'll say this, the one thing that we can count on is that the NFL is going to do what the NFL does, and they continue on with their business as usual, except for the one shining hole in their plan, the draft is going to be more of a studio affair than it's going to be a large mega event. But still, the draft will continue on. Free agency continues. I think there's something going on in Cincinnati because Mike Brown has been spending money. That has excited me and frightened me at the same time because I'm worried. Is it really Mike Brown? Is he okay? Is he in a fever right now because he's spending money? And the Cincinnati Bengals are looking to do some more things. They're Maybe looking at Cam Phillips of the XFL's Houston Roughnecks. That is a report coming out today from the Houston Chronicle. He led the XFL in receiving yards, 455 on 31 catches with nine touchdowns, five games. He had eight catches for 194 yards with three touchdowns and a win against Tampa Bay back on February 22nd and 10 receptions for 122 yards with two touchdowns and a win against Seattle on March 7th. That was the Roughnecks' final game of the season. And let's be honest, the XFL has been a viable location for players, not only to go and showcase yourself if you didn't get maybe a good look the first time around or you didn't have enough of a body of work to convince an NFL team to keep you, or for whatever reason, you needed a landing spot. You got a second chance in the XFL. The XFL now seeing players move over to the NFL I think that's going to work out great for the leagues, both of them, because the NFL is going to be our primary football league. That's without question. And what the XFL offers us, if they can maintain what they're doing, and hopefully next season they'll come back better than ever and we'll have more interest and maybe, just maybe, we're going to be in a sports star world here, not now, but soon. The XFL they're going to help feed some of that hunger, I'm sure, once they get back to sort of a normal practice. But it's going to become, if they play it right, a good, viable alternative to the NFL at the same time. You can have players move from the XFL over to the NFL. And so the Cincinnati Bengals are looking to add to their pickups. I think it's a wise move on their part. I still think that this is crazy, that the Bengals are actually working in free agency to try to make the team better. And that's a good sign for me. Plus, you got a new quarterback coming in, Joe Burrow. You want to make sure the young man is happy. You want to make sure that you can prove to him that, look, we are interested in winning. We're not just picking you up. We're interested in winning. We want to give you the tools you need to be successful. We want to put together a team that can compete for not only the playoffs on a yearly basis, but win in the playoffs, get to the Super Bowl on occasion, that's the goal. And so I'm really excited about what's happened with the Bengals and free agency. This is the most I've been excited about free agency in a long time. I had to think, when's the last time I've been excited about free agency? And I really can't come up with an answer. So I like what they're doing. I like what the Bengals are picking up and doing. Not everything's been a home run, but everything seems really solid They've got a game plan going on, and now we just have to figure out what's going to happen with Andy Dalton. Is he going to get cut, or is he going to be a backup? I think he's going to cut. I think you take the cut. You don't take the salary cap hit. Instead, you really can't find a trade partner with him. 
It's a bad time for quarterbacks and free agency. And I don't know if a team wants to part ways with a lot of money to pick him up. So he's a good value proposition. If you can get him off the waiver wire at a value, I think then you've got a good quarterback. And maybe he can work his way back up. But at the same time, I don't think you spend $17 million on Andy Dalton. That's just a bad maneuver right there. That's just bad business. So I'm inspired. I'm hopeful that once we get NFL football back, whenever that is, and I know it's going to be if right now, if we get it back this season, or what's that season look like? Because you know just by following the news that there are several athletic directors in college ball thinking, look, we might not have football. We might not get it back this season, depending on how this goes. Kirk Herbstreet, even on ESPN Radio, is talking about he'd be shocked if football came back, college football came back this season, because you've got to look at the situation in hand. And the same thing with baseball. Baseball and the Players Association did agree on stipulations for the return in 2020. Now, part of the agreement, ESPN doing the reporting on this, the players and MLB primarily agreed that the 2020 season will not start until each of the following conditions are met. And this is just paraphrasing everything. There are no bans on mass gatherings that would limit the ability to play in front of fans. However, the commissioner could still consider the use of appropriate substitute neutral sites when economically feasible. So that's a possibility. Also, no travel restrictions throughout the United States and Canada. They're not going to start until they can, as a league, move freely across the country, both in Canada and the United States. Why is that important? Because there are going to be some areas in the country that are going to be harder hit than others. Hopefully, that's not going to be the case long term. I know New York is dealing with it heavily right now. West Virginia, the numbers are coming up, but at the same time, it's not as bad as New York. And so you got to have freedom of movement. What does freedom of movement mean? It means there's a lift on travel because everything seems to be under control. And to be honest with you, I don't know if this season is going to happen because we're talking about a virus that yet has a, a defense against. And so there could be another flare-up. That's something I keep in mind. And I'm not trying to be all doom and gloom here, but I'm just going to say the things that need to be said. This could be a long-term proposition here. And so MLB, they'll come back if there's no travel restrictions. If there's no travel restrictions, that's a good sign. Plus, they will come back if medical experts determine that there would be no health risk for players, staff, or fans with the commissioners and unions still able to revisit the idea of playing in empty stadiums. So what if the players just played? Empty stadium. It's not the same. It's never going to be the same. But at the same time, it's a product that's on television. And can you imagine maybe the morale? If they can guarantee health and safety and they have to play in an empty stadium, can you imagine the morale? Because at that point, it might be a morality issue. Yeah, it might be a morale issue. That's what I'm trying to say. Uplift some people. But at the same time, it's got to be safe. There's got to be safety concerns, and that's more important, health and well-being and safety. But if we get live sports back in some fashion, that's going to lift some spirits up. At the same time, you've got to do it and be smart about it. So baseball, they're looking at it. The NFL, we're going to get to that point. College football, we're going to get to that point where we're going to start crossing some lines and some things are going to have to happen. We're only a few months out. And nobody knows where this is going to go right now. Hopefully, by what we're doing, we are staying home, limiting all our travel, not going out unless we have to. For those essential workers, we appreciate them for being out there. Everybody else, work at home if possible. For businesses that can afford their employees that opportunity, please continue to do so. For those employees that have to take unemployment, Let's hope we can get you back to work sooner than later. It's going to be tough right now. I mean, nobody wants to go through all of this. And I want sports back as much as you do. Because, again, it's where we go. A lot of us, anyway. If you're listening to me, we're all where we go. 
we're all together. We all go to sports. We all go there to find sort of release. It's sort of a shelter for us. And now we don't have shelter. We're told to shelter in place, but we can't shelter with what we would usually shelter with, and that's sports. But at the same time, the NFL, thankfully, conducting some business right now, and that's been something to behold because they can do all this really in place. It's the actual, when we get to football season, we start crossing some lines, baseball season, and of course, the Stanley Cup as well in the NHL and the NBA. And I know there's some talk of maybe playing in empty arenas for the NBA, and as goes the NBA, probably everybody else goes. I'll give them credit. They've been really strong as a league as far as handling their employees, handling how they're going to deal with loss of revenue, how they're going to deal with the financial well-being of their staff. They've done a really good job. I think the NHL the NHL could do better. They're not terrible, but they could do better. And I know the revenue is going to be really important to these leagues, but at the same time, I think you can do better. You can, you can do a lot better. But they're not doing a terrible job. I, I don't want to mislead you, but I think they can do better. They could cut top down. Instead of cutting the little guys, the the support staff, I, I would I would do what the commissioner has done. NBA, Adam Silver. I mean, he took a pay cut. You know why? Because I'm getting paid enough. He felt, look, I can take a pay cut. I can bear it. I can deal with it. Let's keep my let's keep my league together. Let's keep my staff together. Probably to paraphrase what's going on in his head. But the NHL, there's some discussion. Some players want to just go into the playoffs. Obviously, there are some teams that are locked and ready to go. As far as where they're at in the standings, there are other teams that are like, look, hey, we want a full season. If we're going to do this, either expand the playoffs or give us a full season, let us finish this thing out. Let's have some legitimacy to it. It's an interesting situation right now because what would an expanded NHL playoff look like? What would the playoffs look like in the NBA if we we went today? I don't know. I don't know how you go about that. And trust me. You can figure a way to pull this off at the same time. You have to do it without fans. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how you pull that off. I don't know what that looks like. What does that entail? To do it and to be safe. How do you do that? At the same time, we're sitting there looking for programming. We're looking for sports. And trust me, live sports is a program winner. It is a winner because you cannot replicate it. You can have classic games, and we've got a classic game coming up tonight over on our sister station, Cat Sports 93.3 and 1340. It's from their NCAA days when they were making their runs. And that's fascinating. That's interesting. But we're doing that every so often. We're doing one Today, we're going to do one on Sunday, and then we're going to reset again, sort of simulating in our minds at least what they would be doing in the NCAA tournament. So we're doing that, and we carried a classic Pirates game yesterday, sort of give you something as a diversion. How long can we do that, though? That's the thing, and it's not the same. It's It's got to be something fascinating. It's got to be like yesterday. We carried the 1960 World Series Game 7. I had never heard that. 1960, I never heard that. That was something that I had never experienced. So that's it's interesting to me. A game from a few years ago, okay, uh, you know, I've seen it. Not really sure if I want to go back and revisit it. Classic games really have to be classic. But at the same time, we're looking for something. We're looking for anything. And that's my challenge here. I'm going to be quite candid with you. That's my challenge. I'm trying to balance. Let's keep this sports. Let's talk sports. Let's stay on point. Let's be a little lighthearted here. Let's have some fun with it. Let's enjoy doing the radio show. Hey, let's not be oblivious to what's going on. We got to actually try to keep in our minds that things have changed. I've got to try to balance all of that. However I do it, 
you'll be the first one to know because I, I still haven't figured this out yet. I'm going to be quite fair and honest with you. I haven't figured it out yet, but you're sticking around, you're listening, and I appreciate that. Quick timeout. We come back and wrap it up. It's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Don't worry. Paul Swan has the wheel on The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're wrapping up today's edition. Friday, March 27th, Paul Swan with you live in studio on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. On Monday, we're going to talk a little bit about how much the top teams in college football made because I've got the numbers. We didn't get into it today, and I wanted to save that because I wanted to break it down. I'll give you a preview. Conference USA didn't do so well. And I don't have everybody's numbers just yet. The report I'm referencing has the top five teams in Conference USA, also has the top overall Power Five teams. So the highest grossing football programs in college football, if you can guess, the top team is Texas. You are correct. As far as Conference USA is concerned, Marshall's not even in the top five. UTEP with 14.22 million, FIU with 14.12, Rice with 13 million, UAB with 12 million, Florida Atlantic 11.9. That's not good, is it? That's not good. And here's the interesting thing from this story. And if we get time on Monday, we'll try to break it down a little bit further. I just thought, thought it was fast. You know, the bottom five, bottom five grossing, number one's West Virginia at 25. And this is bottom five of Power Five, 25 million. Rutgers second with 27 million. Wake Forest second as well at 27 million. Then Vanderbilt, 32 million. They're fourth in Boston College, 32.3 million. Again, uh, this is gross. Basically, highest grossing football teams in the bottom five, West Virginia, is number one. The Power Five schools at 25 million. And just to compare that, I just want to give you an opportunity to kind of compare that, give you an idea of what some of the other schools are doing. West Virginia, 25 million. UCF, top of the group of five with 30 million. Some interesting numbers. We'll break them down. Hopefully we can look at it on Monday. Thanks for tuning in to today's edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Back on Monday. Until then, good night, everyone.